Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and today I'm asking the question, what is the worst tier of World of Tanks? Now, worst is kind of a subjective word. Worst at what? Worst at making you rage, worst at losing credits, worst for playing stock tanks, etc, etc. So I'm trying to amalgamate it into just the worst tier to play inside the game. Now, if we were to look at it from a matchmaker perspective, the worst tier would probably be tier 4, because the majority of your battles, you're being fed to the tier 5 and tier 6 tanks, because tier 4 can't meet tier 2. But when I go and look at the results that tier 4 tanks get, well there are some very good vehicles, Leather Kehoe I'm looking at you, all in all there's no real outstanding disparity between all the tanks. However, when we take a look at which tier has the biggest difference in win ratio amongst all of the vehicles, uh, there is one tier that stands head and shoulders above the rest. And ladies and gentlemen, that is tier 3. All 10 of the tanks that have the biggest win ratio difference in the entire game are all at tier 3. With some of them, like the Samoa S35, or the premium version of it, the Panzer S35, packing an 18, nearly 19% win ratio difference from the player. So that means that if you're, on average, a 50% win ratio player, if you play one of those vehicles and you play it well, you're going to be getting 68% wins in the vehicle because the tanks are just outrageously overpowered. Now, this also means that when you're not playing one of the most overpowered tanks at Tier 3 and you're playing the Tech Tree tanks, or maybe you're just a new player and actually trying to grind your way up to reach the higher tier vehicles, that when you play vehicles like the Chiha, the LTVZ38, or the AMX38, that those tanks are packing an average win ratio of sub 30% in the Chiha's case. Which means that for every player who's getting 50% win ratio in the Chiha, there's one player out there who's getting 10% win ratio. It's staggering to me that there are tanks like this in a tier inside the game that would turn a unicorn into a, a happy little strawberry. Uh, at least statistically. But you know what? Showing you all the statistics is one thing. Let's take a look at some filthy gameplay at tier 3 to really emphasize it. So today, our hero, or maybe it's fairer to say our villain, is going to be Jancy, 20 from the European server, playing in the infamous Panzer 2J. This is a tier 3 premium German tank uh, that has preferential matchmaking, I believe. But then again, I don't think tier 3s ever can meet vehicles higher than tier 4 these days, but back in the day, they could. And this tank has 80 millimeters of frontal armor and 50 millimeters of side armor. That's at a tier where most tanks, even with their premium rounds, don't have enough penetration to go through it. To put that into perspective, this tank kind of has tier 5 armor, like a KV-1, at a tier where nobody has the guns to be able to compete with it. Now, this would all be fair and well if it was a tech tree tank and everybody could get these their hands on this tank, right? But no. The Panzer II J has a rich history inside World of Tanks, being sold in the original collector's edition of the game, which is only available in the CIS region. However, people could uh, sell them on eBay because they actually worked on the EU server and the NA server as well. I was lucky enough to be able to get my hands on one of these, and for a while it was considered to be the most filthy tank in the game. Now, why is it filthy? It's not just filthy because it's overpowered. Uh, with regards to how its armor works. It's also filthy with the amount of penetration that the vehicle has. And that is that it has basically no penetration on its standard rounds, awful penetration on its standard rounds, of only 23. But if you load gold on this vehicle, you double the penetration to 46. So accordingly, this means that players have to spam gold in this tank, and Jancy is no exception. Loading the gold in this vehicle Doubling your penetration means that the vehicle now becomes playable. 46 millimeters of pen is still not great at tier 3, but it starts to become enough where you can go through the enemy tanks, even with auto-aiming at them, like Jancy is going to be doing in this replay. So, what happens is, is considering this thing has a little pop-pop-pop auto-loader, and it has to spam gold, and these shells, each one that you see, is 800 credits. So that means that every time that Jancy holds down the mouse button, I believe it is costing them, as this has a 10 uh, clip burst magazine, this is costing them 8,000 credits. So what it means is that Jancy is firing the equivalent of an FV215B or an FV405 premium shell, but with the reload of the tank being an outrageous 3 seconds and the unload time being not, not too bad as well. It takes 1.2 seconds to fire out the entire magazine. 
that this thing can fire 8,000 credits worth of ammunition in like sub five seconds. So that can make this an incredibly expensive tank to play. Now, one of the things that you're going to be seeing in this replay is that if you have one of these vehicles from it being a collector's edition back in the day, or if you have one of these vehicles when Wargaming have sold them, usually as uh, bundles where you buy a hundred euros worth of gold or a hundred dollars worth of gold, and then you get this vehicle for free. But realistically, it's for the whales of World of Tanks. And the only people who have managed to get one of these will be through that, unless you've got it through some kind of obscure event. To be fair, I can't remember the last time that Wargaming have sold this vehicle, but please do let me know in the comments down below. The result is that Jancy is able to block enough damage to destroy their vehicle multiple times over, and they can just drive around, auto-aim at the enemy tanks, and just keep holding down the mouse button while spending tens of thousands of credits in the process to be able to completely unbalance a game of World of Tanks. Now, to be fair, this is kind of like a, a battle of the seal clubbers here, because vehicles like the Sahariano or the Samoa S35 on the enemy team, you saw that those tanks were getting outrageous win ratios. So if the Sahariano does actually fire gold now at Jansi, they should be able to deal with this vehicle. But the question is, are they going to? Oh yes, of course. I mean, if anyone's been playing tier three, you'll know that's exactly what the Saharianos do. Luckily, the second gold round bounces. The Panzer S35 is not firing gold, and this, this Sahariano is only firing regular rounds, which means that Jansi can just drive alongside, get towards the cap circle, and not even manually aim here, and just keep auto-aiming and just keep holding down that mouse button. Again, each time, this is kind of like, I think it's either four or it's 8,000 credits, depending on whether the gold round costs 400 or 800. You know what, I'll just take a quick gander. What is it? Is it 800 or is it 400? Okay, to be fair, I am exaggerating. It's only 400. Okay, so each one of these magazines is only costing 4,000 credits. 4,000 credits every five seconds. That's an expensive way to play World of Tanks, right? So Jancy now gets back towards the cap circle and it's, in every other scenario, pretty much, Jancy would have lost this battle in the vast majority of tanks at tier three. Maybe not the, uh, the S35, but it really just feels like a formality. And so, ladies and gents, boys and girls, I know that the Panzer 2J is not a new vehicle, but when you take a look at just how bad Tier 3 has gotten, it begs the question, why aren't Wargaming actually doing anything about it? Do they not care about Tier 3 at all? All they'd have to do is balance about four or five vehicles, nerf them, adjust their statistics, would literally take one of their developers a day or a couple of days to do, and then instantly, maybe players would consider it to be worthwhile playing tier three again. So Jancy at the end of this game says GG. GG, AKA good game. And no, I, I really don't think this was, unfortunately, Jancy. This just shows the epitome of pay to win and a problem that Wargaming has. Not just the pay to win aspect of the game, but the fact that they just don't care about low tiers. Wargaming have made good steps recently with enabling tier four and tier five tanks to earn points inside the battle pass, but their lack of care of what should be the garden of World of Tanks, the low tier where players can come in and learn to play and grow as players, hopefully in a safe place, to then feel comfortable enough to continue their World of Tanks journey without being squashed at the mid tiers and quitting very quickly, has been sullied by tanks and arguably by dubious players who want to pay Wargaming $100 and then be a hero inside the game without really having to know very many mechanics. I don't want to hate on, on Jancy, but they were just driving around, auto-aiming and firing 4,000 credits worth of gold for each one of their magazines, with the enemy team having no chance to be able to fight back unless they return the favor. And unfortunately, I think the only person who had a GG here was probably Jancy, as the other 29 players in this game just felt like unpaying actors to enable a hundred dollar tank to have a hero round. Fortunately, this practice is not really that sustainable as Jancy spent 171,000 credits on ammunition this game, meaning they lost 46,000 credits with a premium account. And if we were to take away the 65,000 they got from completing a daily mission, this would have been a 110,000 credits lost in a sub six minute round. But the fact that this isn't a sustainable practice 
won't stop players from doing it. And one of the quickest fixes that Wargaming could make to try to alleviate this huge problem that is tier 3 with the enormous win rate disparity and clearly players playing this tier just to pad up the win ratio of their account is to simply go and do some research and nerf the vehicles which are becoming increasingly popular with obviously broken win rates. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is why I think tier 3 is by far the worst tier in World of Tanks. I would thoroughly recommend that all of you avoid it like the plague. It is a disgusting shell of a tier to play and my heart goes out to all of the new players who, who do what a lot of us did back in the day and actually climb the tech tree without free experience or just skipping up in premium vehicles. Anyway, that's it for today. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know what you think is the worst tier in World of Tanks and why. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Sunday, later on today, there will be the World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase featuring this week the BZ-75, which is currently top of the tree. So come along as I ask the question, do rockets make everything better? So really looking forward to seeing you all live right now on Twitch. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.